I have such an amazing message today. It, it hit me about two, three weeks ago. It's been brewing on the inside of me. And I really, really pray and, and, and ask God that, that the instruction that I'm going to give you today will, will catapult and shift something in you. That it will challenge you. That it will make you think like, you know what, I never heard it taught like that before, but you know what, I'm going to give it some thought. So I pray today that the word will, 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 will enrich you, challenge you, and more importantly, that it will give you something that you can live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every week. So bring out the notepad, take some notes. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Take notes. Amen? Remember, you're going to retain way more if you take notes of what I'm going to teach you. So the... the um, title of my message today is called Mindless Eating. Amen. I know. Okay. It's a pretty interesting picture there. You know, I'm not going to be talking about food, but you, I think you will, ca you will catch the connection of what I'm going to talk about. Mindless eating. See, our mind is one of the most valuable thing we have. Are you awake? Amen. Our mind is the most valuable thing besides having God and Christ Jesus, Holy Spirit and the Word and all that. Our mind is the most valuable thing. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So as you think, so are you. And I've said this for years. If you don't like, so are you we got to change the think. Right. we got to go from the shark tank to the think tank and change the way we think. And you know what? Our, our God is such an incredible God the way he made us. We can change the way we think. Right. We can literally change. We can change the anatomy of our brain. We can heal our brain where it has been... Um, damaged by depression, drugs, alcohol. We can change it and, 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 and uh, heal it. It's called neuroplasticity, meaning neuro, the nerve. Plasticity meaning change. You can change it. Science has already, already proven this. So as a man thinks, so is he. So wouldn't it make sense that, w that, we, can pay, that we should pay a, a, an attention to what we think? We should pay attention and, and learn as much as we can about it. Now, when you go and you buy something, like, like you, you know, I buy this phone. I have a phone. And in order to really understand this phone, I need to go to the manufacturer, right? Yep. Which is Apple. They manufactured this phone. So they are the ones that know exactly how to operate this thing, yep. right? Now, who manufactured you? Okay, so where do you go? Where do you go for your manual to figure out how to, how to change your life, how to improve your life, how to get better, and how to have this amazing life that God already promised you, but sometimes we get in the way of the promise. Sometimes we, because of the way we think, because of the way we speak, because of the way we act, we get in the way. Amen? Amen? So the Bible has a lot to say about the mind. I was amazed at all the, all the verses there was on mind and thought. There is oogles and boogles of scriptures about that. I was amazed. So first of all, I want to ask you this. Do you know, do you know that God has you on his mind? The Bible says that. The Bible says that he has you and me on his mind. Amen. Yes. Pretty interesting, huh? Thank you, See, we are a thinking being. We were created to think. Yeah. Aren't we? 
We're a thinking being, and we're created to think. See, animals, here's a funny story, or a funny thing, is uh, I heard this um, dog guy talk about dogs, and he's a Mexican, and he goes, you know what, in America, people think do uh, uh, dog owners think dogs are humans. He says, in Mexico, dogs are dogs. Because <laughs> they are. Dogs are dogs. Dog, the, your dog is not going to sit in your living room, and he's thinking, I wonder if she's going to feed me. They don't think, they don't have that capability. They have capability of learning through repetition, but they are not thinking beings like you and I are. And that's the difference between us and animals. This is what Ben Franklin said. He said, we were all born ignorant, but we, mu we must work really hard to remain stupid. Amen. Takes work. It takes work to be stupid. The Bible does say stupid also. That's right. it, it uses the word stupid. So we're going to talk about some mindless eating. Have you ever been around candy or other snack-like junk and just reached for it? Yep. This is full of junk. And you just reach for it. And you put it in your mouth. Again, put it in your mouth. Put it in your mouth. Just like a baby, you know, that has a little rattle, it sticks it in its mouth. And you just sit there. And you give absolute no thought to what you are putting in your mouth. You give absolute no thought what is in the thing that you are putting in your mouth. You give absolute no thought of what is going to do to you, what is going to do to your tissue, your bloodstream, your liver, your kidney, your colon. You would give no thought to it. That's called mindless eating. Now, there's another level that's really sadder than that, that's deeper. And that is when you take a lie and you allow the lie to come in your ears, and you allow the lie to enter here and enter into your heart, and you accept it. Amen. That's another level. It's a deeper level. And what can that lie be? That lie can be, I am really not good for anything. I am, I'm pretty worthless. I'm ugly. I really am not as smart as my neighbor. I'm not popular. People really don't like me. That's one lie. That's a lie. Why am I saying that? Because God says something different about you. Amen. So there's something that you and I must establish in our life. We must establish that the word of God is a lamp lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. What is that? It is truth. Amen. Truth. We have to have a measurement in our life that we can say, this is it. This is, the, this is truth. This is what I can put my money onto. This is what I can absolutely believe no matter what. Because when you do, the lies will not penetrate. And you will not be a mindless eater. Here's some examples. Have you ever been surprised by something you said just flew out of your mouth? Has that ever happened? Mindless. Mindless. What about parenting? What about when the teacher comes, comes to you and he says, you know what? Your daughter or your son is unruly. You need to put them on medication. If you as a parent don't give that any thought, and you as a parent don't go and you do your due diligence in, in, in studying and looking at data, you will take advice from a person that is unqualified to diagnose and say, what's the path for my child? And you will succumb to something that is going to sabotage your child's future. 
You are going to put something in that child's mouth. Let me ask you something. Is your child deficient of Ritalin? Is it Ritalin deficient? Is it? Are you depression? Are you antidepressant deficient? Is that what's wrong with you? Are you Prozac deficient, women? Are you Xanax deficient? This is just, a, you know, an example because I, medical field is my field, so I always tend to go that way, that route, my brain. Is, is there a room for medicine in the world? Yes, there is. But there's not room, there is not room for a mind-altering medication that is going to hurt you, that is going to put you on a path where you are pretty much useless in society. That is not God's best for us. And I'm telling you, you come to me and you tell me my child needs this. I'm going to tell you, absolutely screw you. Yeah. Screw you. My child does not need medication. Amen. I can tell you something. I was a very unruly child. <laughs> I was. I was difficult. No, I was. That my, every time I get with my siblings, that's always a topic of, of a discussion. <laughs> How unruly I was. And, and I'm telling you, if I was living today, I know my mother would tell these people, go to hell. Yeah. I, ain't putting my, I am not putting that in my child's mouth. Yeah. Go to hell. Yeah. I know she would. Why? Because she's not a mindless thinker. Right. She's not a mindless eater. Amen? Amen? So, here's the thing. How are we going to serve the Lord while we're playing crazy? And here's another thing. Why are we trying to comfort what we need to confront? You know what, people? Let's not act like a petting zoo. Let's not want to be petted. Let's want to be confronted. That's why bi the Bible is so strong on correction. Correct a child in the way they are to go. Correction and improve. And, and, and correction is, is like a way of life. It puts you on a path that is the right path. Amen. Amen? Here's another one. Sometimes we're trying to fix with miracle what only can be fixed with mechanics. Come on. Amen. You know what? There's times, not always, but there's times we need to do our due diligence. Yep. There's times that we need to do the work. Right. Miracle is not going to do it. Yeah. For example, our finances. We need, to, we need to do our due diligence in our finances. We need to budget properly and not overspend. If you're overspending and you're crying out to God, sorry. Yep. He's going, you know, this is a no-brainer. This is a no-brainer. Yeah. Stop spending and you'll have plenty. <laughs> you don't need a miracle. You need mechanics. Amen. Amen. You, need, you need mechanics. You need to fix. You need to fix stuff. Okay, let's go to some scriptures real quick. I have lots of them, actually. 2 Timothy 1.7. This scripture right here, I grind, me and my, my husband ground into our children. They knew it when they were five years old. They knew it by heart. For God has not given you a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. And he's not given it to you. But this is what God has given you. He's given you power. He's given you love. And he's given you a sound mind. Stop saying you're confused because you're not. Stop saying it. Don't allow those words out of your mouth. Instead, say, I might not know it right now, but I thank God for his wisdom. God's wisdom is inside of me. And it's going to just maybe take a couple of days and it will come. If you, see, if you keep saying I'm confused, you're telling your cells in your brain that they're confused. And no answer will ever come. I know this is hot and heavy, but this is truth. The truth is sometimes hot and heavy. Here's what sound mind means. It means to admonish, which that word is to caution, to reprove, to scold, to urge, to duty. It means calling to soundness of mind. And the other word is self-control. Imagine that. God has given us self-control. But there's times that you and I, we overwrite that. Yeah. I wish God just would slap us. 
I wish we had the Old Testament slapping going on. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Old Testament slapping. <laughs> he has given us self-control. So when people go, well, I just couldn't help it. Uh-uh. Bull. <laughs> Why don't you just be truthful and say you wanted to do it? Right. Let's just be truthful, right? Yeah. Let's just tell the truth. I wanted to take that drug. I know you wanted it. I know. I, wa I want that. I want to eat that crap. I just freaking want it. So let me have it. But then, on the other hand, don't be complaining. Amen. Don't be complaining. When you get sick, fat, and ugly, don't complain. Yeah. <laughs> don't. This is the way it is, people. There is no gray. There is no gray. There is you either listen to the devil or you listen to the Holy Spirit. There is no like semi-gray Holy Ghost here in the middle or semi-gray demon. It's not there. It's this or that. Hot or cold. Am I right? Yeah, it's the truth. And we got to eat the truth, I'm telling you. Romans 12. Romans 12, 2. I've taught this scripture 700 million thousand times. <laughs> I've read it. <laughs> I've eaten it. I've talked. I've spoken it. I've done it. And I'm doing it. Well, you sound, why do you sound so dogmatic? Well, you know what? You're dogmatic because you're telling a lie. I'm going to be just as dogmatic as you are. Amen. Amen? It's time the truth comes up. It's time that truth gets off, gets off the couch and speaks. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Amen. I got, I'm full of estrogen right now. I'm so <laughs> testosterone. Rah! Let the woman roar. <laughs> okay. Romans 12, 2. This is an interesting um, instruction. This is an instruction. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world. Amen. Don't talk like them. Right. Don't do what they do. Don't agree with them. Now, am I talking sectarianism and, and separation? No, because we have to be in this world and we need to be friendly, kind, loving, and merciful. Amen. We do. I have a bunch of people that are around us that are not in this church, that I am merciful, compassionate, loving, all the good stuff. Amen. Yet I speak truth. Right. We speak truth. When they, when they start blabbing, blah, 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 because that's what I call it. It's called a blab, blah, blah, blah. I don't engage. I don't engage in blabbing. I don't engage in, in f um, I don't even know what to call it. Maybe? Stupid, maybe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do not be conformed to this world, which means fashion after and adapted to its external superficial custom. But here's what we need to do. Here's what is our work to do. Be transformed. Amen. Change yourself. Amen. Be transformed. Be changed. Yeah. How? How are you going to do it? By the entire renewing of your mind. Amen. Renew the noodle. Yep. If the noodle is all screwed, unscrew the noodle. Straighten it out. Put some hot water on it. Amen. And then this is why. This is why we're going to renew our mind. So that we may prove for ourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because when we know what the will of God is, when we know his perfect will, I'm telling you, smooth sailing. Amen. Storms, storms, yes. But we fly under the storm. We fly around it. We, uh, we evade it. Amen. There can be storms all around us, but we evade. Right. I used to always say this when I was working, because the girls would go, why, did, why don't they ever say this? Why don't they ever do this to you? Why don't I go, because I fly under radar. Amen. I'm stealth. Yep. And the reason why I'm stealth is because I believe for it. Yep. Well, you never get in trouble. You're like, no, I won't. I will never get into it, because I'm smart. The wisdom of God is on the inside of me. And I know how to navigate. You know, you got to know how to navigate in this world. Right. Woo, 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 woo. And the Bible says that he's given us favor. Yes. 
that there's favor flowing as oil from the top of our body all the way, all the way down to our toes. Favor. People don't even know why they want to give you stuff. They don't even know why they, don't, they like you. But they do because of the word of God in you and because of the spirit of God in you. Amen. So that's, that's using God's word and his wisdom um, f- as your benefit. You know, the Bible says that he loads us with benefits. Yes, loads, not just trickle, sprinkle, loads you and I with benefits daily. Amen. Here's, the, here's a, a, a key for you. How do you transform your life? Is by changing your thinking. But how do you do it? How do you do it? I like, I like the shock collar theory. <laughs> Me and Darren have, you know, we did this for year, years. We don't have to do this so much anymore. But for years, we'd go, ah, 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 don't say it. Don't say it. Don't speak it. Because it was something negative coming out of our mouth. It was something, um, what was coming out of our mouth was not God's best, not his plan. So, bam, shock collar, shock collar. So, You've got to have somebody in your life that you will allow to rebuke you. And who is better, who is better than your spouse? Iron sharpens iron. You will become sharp. Sharp. So if your spouse is constantly saying something to you in regards to a certain arena, certain area, certain things that you do that bugs them, you need to listen. You need to listen because when you do and when you change that thing, it's only going to sharpen you. It's only going to sharpen you, make you better, make you more productive. Aha, it's quiet in here. So allow your spouse to be your shock color. Give him that space. Give him that, give him that authority in your life. Honey, you should not be speaking like that over our finances. If you keep talking like that over our finances, I'm going to slap the snot out of you. You need to change it. You need to change how you talk about our money. If all that's coming out of your mouth is, oh, I don't know if we're going to make it. You know, we're we're not making it. That's the wrong speech. So, So what I know when you're saying these things, what I know is you're meditating on it. I know that's what you're thinking. You're thinking lack, you're worrying, you're fretting. And what did Jesus say? What did he say? He says, don't worry about tomorrow, didn't he? So can we do that? Can we allow ourselves to not worry about tomorrow? Because that's what Jesus said. And see the fruit that will come out of that. Good fruit, great wife, great spouse, sharp, on it, taking care of the finances with with stewardship, speaking the right thing over our money, helping our money increase because of our thought and our speech. Psalms 26.2, here's something we need to allow God to do to us, is examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Test my heart and my mind. You have got to allow the Holy Spirit that space in your life. When you hear that voice on the inside, you got to do it. Many times in my life, I've, I'm not listening to that. Many times I've done that over the years. And I've suffered because of it. (laughs) When we were married, you know, first married and we were together and and we were starting to to build our married life, I would never listen to the Holy Spirit because I didn't want to hear what he had to say. Because I was right. (laughs) I was right. God was wrong. Imagine that. Imagine that. And let me say something. Imagine what kind of relationship I had with my husband. (laughs) Yeah. You know, that is a definition of insanity. It really is. It's a definition of ins- insanity that I know better than God. That's right. And when he's telling me to submit, submit to my husband, I'm like, hell no, I ain't doing that. 
ain't ever happening. And when I said that, when I said that, I am revealing how stupid I am. I am revealing how I incredibly ignorant, ignoramus I am. Yeah. Why? Because God is trying to get me to a place of, of position of peace, position of, of mercy, kindness, goodness, prosperity. And I'm going, hell no. <laughs> is that normal? No, that's insane. It, that is insane. And I was like that for years. For years until I said, you know what, God? I guess you must be right. <laughs> Duh. So there was a day I said, okay, God, that's it. I'm going to do what you're telling me to do. And what, what I'm hearing on here, in here, and what I'm reading here, most of the time skipping over it because I didn't want to read it, I'm going to do it. That's it. I'm doing it. I, I, don't, I can't live like this anymore. Guess what happened? Things changed, yes. Amen. Drastically things changed. <laughs> so when we come together as spouses, we come together, we walk the same path holding hands, hand to hand. Imagine what happens in the family, in the family unit. Proverbs 16, 23. The mind of the wise instructs his mouth. Oh, that's so good. And adds learning and persu persuasiveness to his lips. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the mind and healing to the body. Amen. I'm telling you people, science is proving this already. That what you think and what you speak determines your physical outcome. Amen. They've tested cancer patients. They've tested people with illnesses. And the ones that thought properly, thought right, and the ones that spoke right, re recovered way quicker than the ones that didn't. So God is trying to get our attention. He's trying to teach us something. He's trying to say, you know what? That rotten thinking that you got from your parents, you need to shuck and jive on it. It ain't working. Amen. You know, because this is what our parents taught us. And if you're now in your 40s and 50s, we can't blame your parents anymore. Right. Now you got to blame yourself <laughs> if you want to blame. <laughs> Obviously, blaming doesn't do much in life. But what does much in life is accepting truth, is admitting, you know what, this is how I'm thinking, but you know, I know I can change this. I know I can think different. And be aware of your thoughts. Be aware of what's going on up there. In order to fix our mind, we have to think on things that are lovely and of good report that bring virtue. Philippians 4.8, listen to this, Philippians 4.8. This is Paul teaching. He says, finally, brothers, which is the church, finally, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. If there is nothing like that in your life, you must find it. You must, you must dig and find it. And I think we can start with our salvation. Amen. Let's be thankful for our salvation. Here's another one. Be thankful that you live in the United States of America. Yes. Be thankful for your nation. Yes. I am from another nation. I understand how great we have it here. I am thankful daily for this country. Amen. Be thankful for your spouse. Be thankful for your children. Meditate on those things. Think about it over during the day. Think about how thankful you are that God has hooked you up with the type of people that he's hooked you up with. Amen. And you might not have everything you want in life at the moment, but you're going to spend your days either dreading 
or being thankful? Amen. Fearful or faithful? Amen. Complaining or praising? Amen. Do you, anybody in here like complainers? No. Okay. If you don't like complainers, imagine what God thinks w when he's looking into your brain and he's seeing all the complaining that's going on in your brain. <laughs> Think about that. Complaining, the, all that does, it gives you brain damage. Right. Seriously, it gives you brain damage. It shrinks your brain. It prevents you from a cognitive thought. It prevents you from a creative thought. It prevents um, solutions to come into your life. That's right. it, it closes everything up. But when you, when you are thankful, you, you think on, on good things, your brain lights up and all the neurons go to work. Amen. They go to work and they're, they're going, yeah, you can have this idea, you can do this, you can make money with that, you can have this, this kind of relationship, you can do this, blah, blah, blah. Blood flow flows through your body. The Bible says that the life of the blood is in the flesh, so the blood brings life, amen? amen. Increase in blood flow, increase in everything. As you train your brain to think good thoughts. Amen. Proverbs 23, 12. Listen to this one. Apply your mind to instruction. Yes. God is not going to do it for us. You and I have to apply <clears throat> our mind Amen. to instruction and correction and your ears to words of knowledge. When your friends come around, and all that comes out of their mouth is dung, tell them, those ears right here, these two things right here, are only open for business when knowledge comes out of your lips. Amen. Until then, shut up. I am not here to listen to your dung. Right. Amen? Amen? Now, there is a difference in when someone comes and says, you know what, this is what's going on in my life. Um, I need help. I need help. There's a difference in dumping or asking for help. Those are two different things. If they're asking for help and input, you listen to their grievance, then you give input. If they take the input, you're open to give it again next time. If they don't, my ears, my ears are shut, my lips are closed, no more. No mas. No mas, mi amigo. <laughs> No more, no more wisdom out of my lips. You, you've, this is the thing, is when someone is giving you wisdom, you've got to take it and do it. Amen. Don't poop on it. <laughs> take it as pearls. It's pearls in your hand. It's valuable. Proverbs 23, 19. Hear, my son, and be wise, and direct your mind in the way of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do that? Start your day by reading your Bible. Amen. Start your day by reading the Bible. You would be amazed what you see in there. You would be amazed at the instruction that can jump out at you. Amen. It's so cool. I was reading the other day. This is... Um, do you remember when Jesus healed the guy that was put on the roof or he was, he was uh, lower down through the roof? Uh-huh, remember that one? If you read the script, the verses above that, it talks about, now Jesus was in the synagogue teaching and there were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the next sentence says, and the power of Jesus was there to heal them. The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The power of Jesus was there to heal them, the Bible says. Amen. So when Jesus heals the, the para, paralytic, what did they do? They murmured. They got offended. They murmured. They complained. And what happened to them? They walked, exactly. They walked out the door the same rotten apples they were when they walked in. That's right. They did not get their healing. Isn't that amazing? Jesus' power was there to heal. Yep. And they blew it. Yep. They didn't want it. They yeah, they rejected it. So here's what, what happens when you hang with Jesus. I'm going to show you. 
when you hang with Jesus, in Luke 24, 45, this is what can happen to us. And this is hanging with him and reading the word. Then he thoroughly opened up their minds to understand the scriptures. So many times I hear people, yeah, but I don't understand what it says. Oh, I want to slap you so much. <laughs> okay, if you don't understand what it says, read Proverbs. Amen. If you can't read Proverbs, you need a lobotomy. <laughs> you do. <laughs> there's no hope for you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not true because there's always hope. Amen. There is always hope. So read Proverbs. Read Psalms. Read the Gospels. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Is, is the Holy Spirit your teacher? Yeah. Is He? Yeah. Is He capable of teaching you? Yes. Okay. Then, then your part is to pick up the book and read it. Amen. That is your part. Amen. And if you don't do that, you are going to stay ignorant. That's right. the way it is. Philippians 2.5. Here's another good one. This is a really good one. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind. It pretty much says, let this same, same mind be in you. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus. So you and I can't have the mind of Christ. We can have the same mind that he has. Amen. So let this, this mind, this is what that means. Let this mind means to have understanding. So you can't say you don't understand. You can say, thank you, Father, that you give me understanding. Amen. So what will happen then? Cells open, right? Yeah. Brain opens, cells are open, blood flow comes around, and you get understanding. Amen. And then it's, uh, the other one that it means is it means to be wise. It means to feel. It means to think. It means to be of the same mind. It means to cherish the same view. You and I must cherish the same view as Jesus. So if you don't know what view Jesus cherishes, you need to go and read about him. Right. You need to go find out for yourself. Amen. Let's grow up, right? We're all adults. So let's grow up. Take responsibility and read. Amen. Here's another one. It means to be harmonious. Be harmonious. How many of you are harmonious in your, in your uh, marriage? How many are you harmonious in your relationships? If it's an ouch, well, you know what? You, are, you can change it. Yeah. It is in your power to change it. Right. If you don't want to, well, hell well. You don't want to, then have what you got. Yeah. But if you really want to change, you can. Yeah. If you really want to change your behavior, you can. Say, I can. Mm -hmm. It also means to seek. Have, be curious. Be curious. My kids used to always say, oh, mommy, you're so curious. I said, well, until I ask a question, I'm ignorant. Do you know that? Until you ask a question, you be stupid. <laughs> so ask lots of questions. Amen. Here's another one. To strive for. To be of one's party. I'm of Jesus' party. Amen. Me and Jesus party together. Amen. I side with him. That's what that means. I side with Christ. And if there's area in our lives that is not siding with Christ, they're pretty easy to find because there's chaos and darkness and weirdness going on in our life. Right. All we got to do is to make the shift. It's just a shift. You know, life is not complicated. I think people complicate it way, 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 way too much. Yeah. Life is pretty simple. Colossians 3.2. It says to set your mind. Set your mind. And keep them set on what is above. Right. If your mind is in hell every day, Bring it to heaven. Amen. Tweet that one. If your mind is in hell every day, bring it to heaven. Yes. How hard is that? Understand that, that in many ways, when we are living in fret, worry, and, and discord, strife, 
It's just in your head. It's really not what's really going on. It's just in your head. Once you change it, your eyes are going to change, and you're going to go, what was I thinking? <laughs> well, you were thinking stupid. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. So set your mind and keep it on what is above and not on the things that are on the earth. Are you saying that we never should do anything on the earth? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, as you set your mind on what is above, there's a wisdom there. There's understanding. There's enlightenment. There's all this great stuff that can come to you, too, so that you can uh, function in peace. You can function in harmony. You can function in prosperity. You can function and have this great family and these great children. Why? Because your mind is set on things above. And that does not mean you're flying around with angels or something. It's not what that means. <laughs> it means your thoughts are steadfast. Your thoughts are established. Your thoughts are, are pure. They're strong. They produce. Amen? Your thoughts produce. I read an article the other day that says 75% of mental illness is caused by wrong thinking. And when I say mental illness, I'm talking schizophrenia, I'm talking manic depression, I'm talking depression, I'm talking, what are the other ones called? No, there was another one. There was one more. Bipolar, yes. It is caused by wrong thinking. Amen. Imagine that. And imagine this, when we think about, when we talk about mindless eating, a person with that condition has nobody around them to teach them, so they mindlessly go to the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist says, oh, you're just deficient of Prozac, let me just give you some of that. Or how about some quaaludes? Or how about some psychiatric, like Haldol and all these medication that um, severely, severely damage your brain. In my clinical studies, I worked in a mental institution for six months. That was probably the worst six months of my life. And I was 20 at the time, so I didn't understand what I understand today. I had no idea what was going on, but it was dark. I didn't know hell, devil, or any of that stuff, but I saw darkness, and it really bothered me. And it was a horrible, horrible time to, to see the people. There would be people laying on the ground in fetal positions, just like that, just laying like this all day. Or they would be so doped out of their mind. There was slobber all over themselves. Their tongue was thick, like, uh, they felt like their tongue was thick. It wasn't, but they felt like it was so thick because of Haldol and some of those psychiatric meds. Those are the side effects. They, nothing that came out of, their out of their mouth made any sense. Absolutely nothing. The ones that could speak made no sense. And these poor people were victims. Victims of lack of knowledge. The Bible says that we perish for lack of knowledge. And these poor people were victims of not just demonic forces, but the medical industry that this, they see this as the only way of helping them. The only way of helping these people was to medicate them and to put them, some of them were tied in chairs, like tied up because they were violent. And if you came close to them, they would burst out in, in violent, um, rage with her body and the only way they they felt they could control them was to give them pills that the pharmaceutical industry produced these people would never get out of there like that ever that's very sobering sobering to think that god's creation God's creation, he created these people in his likeness and in his image. He loves them. Why? I, why do I know that? Because God said that he so loved the world, yes. not the church. God so loved the world Amen. that he gave. And that gift he gave, these people didn't know about and never unwrapped it. 
That gift was in their living room, wrapped up, and they didn't even see it. Why? Because nobody told them. And back then, I had no idea. I didn't know God. I didn't know Jesus, Holy Ghost. I didn't know the devil. <laughs> I didn't know hell, nothing. But I can see it now, how horrible that was. Ecclesiastes 7.25. It says, so I turned my mind to understand. I turned my mind to understand, to investigate, and to search out wisdom. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. See, we have to stop thinking microwave. Amen. See, we, we, because we, we live in America, everything happens fast. You know, social, oh, that's not social media. Social media, bam, we get everything quick. You can even get your food that quick because if you use the microwave, you know, you kill, obviously kill all nutrients, but you can still use it and just eat. It's like eating poop, but you can eat it and, um, and it's there. But you know what? With God, that's not the way it is. If there is wisdom needed, sometimes it takes a couple of days. Sometimes it takes longer. It takes time. And we have to slow ourselves down. We have to slow ourselves down and say, Father, I thank you. I am turning my mind right now to understand what's going on. And I know and I believe that you will give me the wisdom to see. You will give me the wisdom to see the right thing. And then it says, it give, it, it, so I turn my mind to understand and to investigate and to search out the wisdom and the scheme, and the scheme of things and to understand the stupidity of wickedness Amen. and the madness of folly. <laughs> so wickedness is stupid. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Amen. Look at gangs. I understand that these young people find comfort. They find comfort in, in being a part of something. But the thing is, is they mindlessly stepped into that, that, that field. They mindlessly stepped into that field of, of ignorance. And they became in an alliance with it. They aligned themselves up with that because of not giving it thought of, okay, if I hook up with you, where, I, where will I be five years from now? Yeah. When all they had to do is to look at a person that had been there for five years and see where they were at, and then think and ask themselves, do I want this when I'm in my, tw my, my mid-20s? Is this what I want? This is what I'm talking about, mindless eating. They mindlessly step into the gang territory and they become a part of that and it kills them. I mean, there's no future in it. And is that God's best? It, that is called the stupidity of wickedness. Amen. Because the Bible says that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap. Amen. If you sow wickedness, thievery, drugs, all the stuff, where, where do you think you will be 10 years? More than likely dead. Amen. I mean, that's the harvest. That's just, this is just the, the law of seed, time, and harvest. And so it is our choice which way do we choose. Do we choose to live our life according to what the Bible says, or do we take it and go downtown and hook up with them, the gang people and say, hey, to hack with it, I'm only going to live five years anyway. <laughs> Might as well have some drugs while I do it. No, thank you. I know. Mark 5.15, look at this one. Mark 5.15. When they came to Jesus... This is all the people and the disciples. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legions of demons. There was this guy that was full of demons, and everybody was afraid of him. I don't know why, but the reason why they were afraid of him is because they didn't understand their authority. So they were all afraid of him. And um, so they saw this guy that, that was used to be possessed by demons. 
that he was sitting there dressed and in his right mind. And then it goes, and they were afraid. So they're still afraid. There's this man that, that, that absolutely lived in hell. Jesus shows up, casts the demon out of him, and now he's in his right mind, sits up and he's clothed and he looks normal. And the people were still scared. So they're scared of evil and they're scared of good. Why? Lack of understanding. They didn't understand what was happening. And it was such a good thing that just happened, they couldn't even fathom it. Their brain could not process the goodness that just happened. And it scared them. Imagine that. Imagine being afraid of good. Yikes, that's a thought. <laughs> Mark 12.30. How am I doing on time, okay? Mark 12.30, it says, Love your Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Amen. We've got to love the Lord with our mind yes. and with all our strength. Yes. Love is a force. Yes, it, is. it is a force that brings healing and wholeness. Amen. It is much better to spend our time loving than hating. It is much healthier for our, 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 our life, for our relationships, for our body to choose love. Yep. Choose it instead of hate. Make yourself just like you have to make yourself to eat good. <laughs> make yourself love. Amen. Choose love instead of hate. Choose to think and believe the best in people instead of being a hater. Amen? Choose to speak kindness and goodness and mercy instead of the other. Because if you do, it will benefit you. On the other side, it will not benefit you. But it will benefit you constantly throughout your life. And loving is, is, is a releasing force. It releases bitterness. It releases resent resentment. It releases unforgiveness out of our life. Think of unforgiveness and resentment. Think of it as a, a black, ugly demon that's in your body. It's just gross. Or a tumor that just grows and grows. It's black and it's slimy and it's ugly. But when love hits it, cast it out. The Bible says, love casts out all fear. Amen. Amen. Here's 1 Peter 5.8. I'm almost done. Yes. 1 Peter 5.8. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Yes. Sober mind. Why? Because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a lion, roaring, like a roaring, he's not a roaring lion, like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. See, if your mind is not filled with love, if your mind is not filled with, with hope, with love, with peace, when the enemy comes and whispers stuff in your ears, you, can, you might just take, time, take some time and listen to it. You might give him an ear. And that's why we got to be sober-minded. And this is, what so, well, this is what sober-minded means. It means compri comprising alike the faculties of perceiving and understanding and those of feeling, judging. Oh, this is confusing. Okay. So it gives you perception and understanding. Amen. Sober mind is a mind that's perceiving and understanding. Amen. Then it goes into, it says, reason in the narrower sense as the capacity for spiritual truth. It gives you a greater capacity for spiritual truth. There are many people in this, in this earth, they have no understanding of spiritual truth. They don't understand. Their mind is not sober. You know, when, when people are drunk, their mind is not clear. They're, that's why w when people are like that, they think they can take their car keys and they think they can go and they, they think they can go and they, they are able to drive their car. Because their mind is not sober, it is drunk. 
And it gives them that, that deceiving uh, sensation that they are able. So therefore, the judicial system makes a whole bunch of money. <laughs> because a DUI is an expensive venture. It's very expensive. And so therefore, we need to have a sober mind. Amen. We can save our money. <laughs> Lots of money. So also, the other, the other thing about sober, it means, it means um, recognizing goodness and of hating evil. Amen. It also is the power of considering and judging soberly, calmly and impartially. Do you guys remember when Solomon, um, when the two ladies came to Solomon with the babies? One baby was dead, the other one was alive, and they were fighting over the baby. Do you remember that story? And Solomon, in his wisdom, because he had wisdom, he said, you know what? He said, I think what we should do with a baby that's alive, we should cut it in half and give, give each part to, to either one of you. So the true mother, the true mother of the child said, no, 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 give the baby to her. So Solomon goes, bingo, I know who the mom is. Boom, and he gave it to the lady that says, no, don't kill the babies. Amen. That's wisdom. That's right. That is discerning right from wrong. That's what all that's what wisdom is. Amen. You are the only gatekeeper to your mind. So guard what goes into it. Don't allow your mind to just... Do you know how many people can't go to sleep because their mind is out of control? Seriously, you know how many people that happens to? I talk to people all the time. And I tell them, I said, you know, all you need to do is control your thinking. Do you know you can control your thinking? Amen. Do you understand that you can take those thoughts and <laughs> change them? You can? Yes, you can. Well, how do you do it? How do you do it? I said, well, you dwell on something else. You change it. You change it. See, the family unit is often the unit that suffers due to lack of understanding and lack of sober mind. Can we see that our family is, is our own team? Can we see that, 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 that we are not two teams? We're one team? Can we see, like, like this message I preached the other day, um, what was it called? No, not hung by the tongue. Playing the blame game. Yeah. Can we see that our spouse is not the enemy, but he is our teammate that we're to pass the ball to? We're not to slam it at him. We're to pass it. Why? Because he's on my team. Can we play the game fairly? The game of life, can we play it fairly? And understand that our family is not the enemy. Can we do that? There's too much of this in families. Right. Am I right? Way too much. Way too much. You know, I understand, I understand far out family, but when it comes to marriage, this should not be. Right. We should both have the wisdom to say, wait a minute, hold on. Hold on. We are both Barcelona. We are both Real Madrid. We are both uh, the patriots. Why are, oh no, what am I? Oh, the, we are jets. We are both jets. We are. Why are we fighting? Why? Are we not going the same direction? Can we not figure out how to stop the fighting and say, you know what? Instead of fighting, let's pass the ball. Pass it. See, I think in many ways the enemy can come into marriages and he can separate and divide. And you and I, the Bible says, be meek as a dove. Meek as a dove. Be meek as a dove. What does that mean? Be soft. Amen. Be gentle. But be wise as a serpent. Be wise as a serpent. Outsmart him. 
Say, buddy, you try to come in here, but let me show you how I pass the ball to my spouse. Let me show you how I can do it. I know that all this crap is going on up here, but you know what? I'm changing this. He is not my enemy. My spouse is not my enemy. I am taking that ball. Uh. I'm passing that ball so good. He cannot help but catch it. Amen. Amen. He cannot help but catch it and catch it gracefully. And then he passes it to the children. Woo! (laughs) And there's just peace and harmony. Isn't that what we are called to? Aren't we not called to peace and harmony as a couple? So can we, can we refrain? Can we stop being selfish? Can we stop always wanting our way? And can we consider the other teammate and allow him to score sometimes? (laughs) Amen. I don't always have to score. I don't. I don't always have to have the accolades. I'm giving it to him. And when I give it to him, I sow the greatest seed in history. Why? Because that man is going to be elevated. His, His confidence is going to blow up. His production is going to blow up. His brain is going to blow up with ideas. And and he's going to be like, oh my God, I got to go out there and make the bacon to bless my wife that passes the ball so gracefully. (laughs) This is the Brady Bunch family. (laughs) Is this possible? Is this possible? All things are possible if you believe and do the work. Amen. 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 Can we gaze far into the future when a flattering individual comes along causing division in our marriages with the goal of separating us as a unit? How many divorces do you think would have been saved if the woman and if the man could have only gazed five years into the future and saw that she was nothing but a harlot and 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 a... I, don't, I wouldn't say Jezebel because I think we, we misrepresent Jezebel, so I'm not going to say it. But can we see that? And can we see that? You know what? The sex is going to go, hmm, whatever. Can we see that? Can we use wisdom? And can we allow our brain to think? Can we see five years into the future to our children what this will do to our children? Can we see five years into the future what this does to our finances? Can we? I'm not, t- I'm not talking to you guys. There's, I'm telling you, there's a reason why I'm saying this. Can we slow down a moment and take a look at our path and see where we're headed? Because wisdom can show you. You can look at your actions today and see what's coming tomorrow. Can we look at our finances and with honest eyes and see that we're headed the wrong direction? Can we then take evasive action to change the direction? You know, it takes five miles to turn a ship around. So changing our finances and changing our stewardship over our finances will take time. I used to work with a lady. She got the family in so much debt with credit cards. And one day she woke up and she was like, oh my God, we owe this much, so much money in credit cards. She went to one of those um, courses to learn how, which I don't think you need to do that. You just need to do what, what is right to do. It's very simple. Spend less than you earn and pay your bills. So two years into her paying her credit cards off, she was like, I cannot believe how slow this is going. Oh, my God. She was fretting. She was discouraged because it's so easy to spend it, but it's so hard to pay it off. It's a slow process if, you, if you're spending more than you're earning. So it takes five miles to turn a ship around, and, to ex- and so we need to expect it to take time. And now is the time to make the changes. Now is the time to be honest with ourselves. 
don't brush it under the carpet because that sucker is going to crawl from underneath that carpet and bite you in the butt. It will bite you in the butt. So don't procrastinate. Procrastination will cause you harm tomorrow. Can we look at our marriages with honest eyes? Can we shut the world out and start seriously building our marriages? Can we divorce prove our marriages? Can we? Yes, we can. This means yes. We can divorce prove our marriages. And let me tell you something. The world's going to scream and shout and do all the stuff that they want to do. This is what I see the world like. You know, and you know what? In my home, you, ain't, you don't have a voice. You do not have a voice in my home. Like I told Darren when our children were young, I said, you and I, we need to decide now that we're louder. We need to decide that we're going to be louder than their friends. We need to be louder than their teachers. And we certainly need to be louder than whatever is out there in the world. The music industry. We need to be louder. So that's why I'm so loud. Because I, yeah, because I've been yelling for years. (laughs) And guess what I'm hearing now from my children? Guess what I am hearing? Mom, you are so right. (laughs) And I'm like, righteous. Of course I was right. Would I ever steer you in the wrong direction? Can we help our children to see that we have their best interest at heart? And there is a finesse to that. There's a certain way to their heart. And you got to figure it out. And God has anointed you as the parent to figure out the, the, the secret chamber of your children's heart. He, has sh- he can show you how to get into that chamber and rotor root stuff out of there. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, I've done it. I know. Okay, so in order to do, in order to do all this, we must take our finger like, like this. Take your finger up on your forehead like this. Put it on your forehead. Move it to file. Scroll down to delete. Click delete to any thoughts that are not according to what the Bible teaches. Amen. Delete, 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 delete. Bam! Delete. Amen. Amen? Yeah, hey, there you go. Then once it's in the recycle bin, kick it out. Yeah. Delete. Amen. Hit delete. And start it taking inventory of your thoughts. Don't be mindless. Say no mindlessness. No mindless eating here. So remember, when you're mindlessly eating, remember, somebody could put rabbit poop in there. And you just freaking eat it. Because you're just mindless. Yeah, it's, you know, you're eating your, tra- <laughs> you're eating your trail mix and somebody's really getting you, putting that dried rabbit poop. And you're just chewing on it. Oh, yeah, this is really good. Lots of fiber. Yum. (laughs) This is just an example. I'm kidding. (laughs) Embrace change. Amen. Embrace it. Change is good. If you're not changing or growing, you're dying. Actually, you're dead. A tree that is not growing is what? It's dead, right? right. It could look fine, but its roots are dead. So we need to be changing and we need to embrace the change. Amen. What better choice do we have? What's our alternative? I always say this. What is your alternative, honey? Give it some thought. Don't be mindless about it. Think about your alternative. If you don't go to work tomorrow, what is your alternative? That's right. Bible says no work, no food. Talked to a man yesterday at the car wash. He's talking about how he is enabling his children. And I'm like, dude, you, you got it all wrong. You're enabling your daughter to be a lazy bum. You need to stop it. Stop giving her money. Tell her, Sister Sledge, tomorrow it stops. Amen. And you either, you either become homeless or you get yourself a job. You're 24 years old. Yeah, there's something wrong with a 24-year-old that's not working. Something's wrong with it. And you are not doing her any favor. Just think about what she's going to be like in her 30s. Yeah. And you know what? Cute's going to go away. <laughs> Cute leaves. You can't be cute forever. Amen? You can't be cute for a little sugar daddy forever. So you might as well be training yourself in the 20s to work, honey. Honey, honey. Amen? I'm serious. I'm dead serious. He's like, man, you that's good. I'm like, hell yeah. I said, if that was my children, I'll slap the snot, snot out of them and 
get your butt to work. You will not live in my house. If you're not going to school and you're living in my house, you're working. Bottom line. And if you're not working, I ain't giving you no food. (laughs) What am I doing? What am I doing when I say that? I am training my children to reign. To reign and not become a welfare recipient thinking that the world owes them something. There is nothing uglier than an entitlement mentality. There is nothing uglier than a person that says, oh, the state owes me. What the hell? You owe this country. Seriously, you owe this country to be a model citizen. You owe this country to dress better. You owe this country to put on some makeup. (laughs) I'm on a roll right now. No, I'm serious. What are we doing to our children? Say, I'm not an enabler. Not an enabler. And let me tell you, when your kids are in their 30s, they will thank you. They will thank you. Absolutely. My daughter, she says things like, well, mom, I guess I'm at the, I'm at the point of no return. I'm either going to sink or swim. And I go, honey, you're going to swim. Amen. You're going to swim because she takes care of herself. We don't take care of her. She takes care of herself. She's 23 years old, finishing up her master's degree, taking care of herself in England. We do not enable. We bless. That's different. We bless, but we do not enable. Amen. And that's how we treat our children. So we're going to embrace change. See, Jesus came with a message that required people to change, didn't he? It required people to change their ways. So let's let's purpose to follow his example. Jesus said some crazy stuff. At least they thought in that day. He was an agent of change. He said, you say do this, but I say do this. And they went, holy balls. How can we do that? Like Nicodemus, how in the world am I going to go back in my mama's womb? (laughs) You know, it's just some crazy stuff. But Jesus was an agent of change. He was innovative. He was an entrepreneur to the bone. He taught us some stuff that is absolutely out of this world. And if we listen and we do, we will have success. Amen. Amen. And let's not say this, people. Don't ever say this to me. I'm going to slap you. I'm telling you, seriously, don't, don't ever say this to me. Well, that's just the way I am. No. If you ever say that to me, I'm going to give you the water. Slap. That's not the way you are. You can change the way you are. You have the power to change the way you are. And what's so beautiful about that is that when you change the way you are, you become way more productive. You become such a beautiful person. Amen? Amen? So no complaining and don't say, nah, 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 nah. well, blah, 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 whatever. So <laughs> listen to what Sig Sigler said. He said, positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. Positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking. Well, I just don't think that's ever going to work. Well, hell no, of course it's not not for you, but it's going to work for me. Because I believe it well. And I'm going to find a way for it to work. My mind is a a solution-producing mind. It will find the solution. I don't care how it finds it, but it will find it. You, I don't care. You go and go into the world of impossibilities. You can live there. I'm not living there. Right. Why am I not living in a world of impossibilities? Because God said that is, all things are, impo- are possible with him if, if I believe. Amen. The believing part is my part. God's part is to do the impossible Amen. on my behalf and on your behalf. All you got to do is believe it believe. and you will have it. And as you believe it, you do the work. You do the work. Amen? In our business, all we're doing is talking positive. We're talking constant positive, positive, positive. It's coming. God is bringing people to us. We are a magnet. People are coming to us. We are a magnet. We are a chick magnet, 
A, uh, what's, what's the male magnet? Oh, I'm, I'm a dude magnet, a chick magnet, I'm a money magnet, because that's our business, money is our business. That is coming to us. Amen. Amen. Fresno and Clovis is our city. Amen. Isn't, isn't it better to do that than me and him spend time in our living room? Well, we just don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> Nothing is working for us. Nobody likes us. What is it? What are we, what are we doing wrong? We're everything, everything we do is not working and it's all wrong. Where, 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 where? 1 800, where, 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 where? I'm telling you, we made a choice a long time ago. We will not participate. I'm not signing up for that class. I'm not doing it. And I will never show up. I'm a no show. I'm a no show for the complaining class. <laughs> and so are you. You're a no show for the complaining class. You're showing up to the class of the thankful, the grateful, and the positive and the joyful. Amen? And the last one I want to share with you is Marcus Aurelius. This is what he said, and this is so true. He says, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself in the way of thinking. So in essence, in essence, your happiness is between two inches of your head. It's right up here. If you choose and think to be unhappy, you will. If you choose and think to be happy, you will. Nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to make you happy. And, and let me say this, let me even say this further. It is nobody's job to make you happy. Right. It is nobody's job to make me happy. It is not his responsibility. My happiness is not on his shoulder. My happiness is on my shoulder. Amen. It is my relationship with God. It is my relationship with the word. It is my responsibility. Amen. And remember this, you are not deficient of antidepressant. Not, not going to do it. Amen. Say, I'm happy. My brain is great. My brain thinks good thoughts. Good thoughts. Power thoughts. Positive thoughts. Amen. As you begin to change your thinking, your speech changes. If you go around people and just listen, you will know exactly what they're thinking. Why? Because it comes out of their mouth. If they're dwelling on sickness, they're going to be talking about their sicknesses. If they're dwelling on bad relationships, they're going to be talking about bad relationships. If they're dwelling on their adult looser kids, they're going to be talking about it. And I always say, well, who produced that? Did they come from your loin? Did you push that child out of you? Is that child yours? I understand they have their own choices. But we need not sabotage that. Amen. We need to speak well of our children. Every one of them. Speak well of them. Whether they're doing the things you want them to do or not. You love them and you, you speak well. And you don't allow your mouth to go any other direction. Amen. You allow your mouth to forge, forge a good future for them. Amen. They're not an annoyance. They're not somebody that they need to move out because you need the room. I hear that all the time. Because <laughs> of the age we're at, you know, we hang with people similar to our age, and they're all going to college. And like, oh, yeah, great. I'm gonna, oh, yeah, I'm getting an extra room. Blah, 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 blah. What does that make your kid feel like? He was the third wheel on the wagon? No, fifth wheel. Because you, you have four, and then you have an extra one you don't really need. So they're the fifth wheel. <laughs> That's what that makes them feel like. It makes them feel like a stranger to you. And they're not. They're out of your loins. They're, they're somebody that you need to love. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's lift our hands right now. Wanna, I want to pray real quick. Father, I thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that you are the teacher, that you are our comforter, that you bring joy to us, Father. Father, we thank you that your joy is our strength. 
And Father, I thank you that we can go into this week with strength, with wisdom, with solution, Father. Father, we thank you that this week you will increase us, that this week you will open the windows of heaven over us, Father. Father, I thank you that this week you will help our mind. You will help our mind to stay on you because you say that we will have perfect peace as our mind stays on you, Father. I thank you, Father, that we will not succumb to distractions, that we will be laser focused this week, Father. And Father, we thank you that you have endowed us with wisdom, that we know that the knower on the inside of us knows the solution that we need to, to, um, um, to, that we need help this week with, Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're our comforter, that you comfort us, that you guide us, that you lead us into all truth. Father, we thank you that the word is a light to our path. It is a step for us to step on, Father. Father, we accept your truth. We love your truth. And we thank you that this week, your favor and your blessing is up on our businesses. Father, for us that need solutions, I thank you that you have the answer and that we will have it this week, Father. We thank you for increased pro productivity. We thank you for new jobs. And Father, most of all, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for Christ and for his blood. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Good stuff, huh? Yes. Yes. Good, stuff. Good stuff. Amen. Well, we'd like to thank you for, for joining us today. We hope that you got something out of this message. Hopefully that your week will be amazing. And we'd love to meet you again next Sunday at 10 o'clock. So until then, you know this, one word from God will change your mind.